All warfare is based on deception. I remember seeing this intro screen for the first time and losing my mind over it. The neon green and the way that they just illustrated this butterfly effect of everything that had happened in the original campaign story. Truly one of the coolest intro screens I had ever seen in a video game at the time. Even still to this day, the very first thing that I do when a new Call of Duty game comes out is play the campaign. And obviously when MW3 came out, it was no different. I was so excited, so ready, that got me so hyped. And it's still no different, even with this year. I'm kind of excited to see what the new story is going to be. Is it going to be like the original MW3 where everything wraps up or are they going to lead it into a fourth game? Who knows? The All it took was the will, the will of a single man. Of a single man. I just spent over an hour recording this video. Playing Drop Zone, getting my ass whooped. I mean, it was honestly a pretty good time. Finished recording, looked over at the Elgato software, and uh, it recorded an hour of audio with one broken frame. Literally didn't stream today because I wanted to record this video instead, and it breaks. I just, I'm gonna swing on myself. And now I get to sit here and repeat basically everything I just said. So anyways, what's going on, guys? It's Rage, and welcome back to some Modern Warfare 3 on the Xbox 360. Again, just spent all that time playing Drop Zone. I don't know if I want to get back into it, but it says there's 128,000 players online. I, I don't believe that. I thought I saw something that uh, once you get into the actual playlist themselves, it shows the accurate numbers. Maybe there actually is 17,000 people playing Team Deathmatch, and maybe there is a 1,000 people playing Drop Zone, but all right, fine. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. <laughs> Drop Zone on downturn. Yeah, no, 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 thank you. Please put me into another lobby. Bro, are you serious? Here, let's go ahead and try and get into a ground war game. Surely this will go over better, right? Starting this off with some domination on interchange and uh, not looking too good. Spawn in, we're already getting trapped at A. So the big thing that I wanted to talk about for this video here was more of the Modern Warfare 3 leaks that we got earlier this week. Again, it's pretty much all but confirmed. Call of Duty's been kind of like tiptoeing around it, but they still haven't like fully announced the game yet. It was leaked from a Monster Energy ad. We got this uh, new picture of Captain Price with assuming Makarov in the background. Since it hasn't been DMCA'd off the internet. I'm assuming it's fine to go ahead and show in the video, but again, it pretty much all but confirms what we already knew. The game's called Modern Warfare 3. They just haven't, like, officially announced the game yet. And I feel like in a really weird sense, we're kind of living through some deja vu right now. Like, we're almost living through the exact same thing that we did 12 years ago when the original MW3 came out. I mean, it's it's a little bit different this go around because we're having back-to-back -back years of Call of Duty where they are sequels. Going from Modern Warfare 22 straight into Modern Warfare 2023 with a direct sequel. We've never had that before. But I feel like what's really deja vu about the whole kind of thing is that obviously Infinity War took care of the original MW2 and the current one and Sledgehammer and Raven had taken care of the original MW3 multiplayer and are assuming doing the exact same thing for this one. Hello? Or at least more so, Sledgehammer had taken care of the original Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer and Raven was more of the supporting act, but Raven's been in that supporting act for quite a while now, especially with Warzone. And I feel like we have a really good chance of seeing kind of the same thing. Now, the original MW3 was more of like a Modern Warfare 2.5 at the time. If you guys were around on launch of the original MW3, I wanted to deny your tack, I'm so sorry. On launch of the original MW3, this game got quite a lot of flack just because, again, a lot of people were calling it Modern Warfare 2.5. It really only felt like they had made this game just to patch Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. Since again at the time, Infinity Ward had that falling out with Activision and uh, we never got the updates to MW2 like we needed. Imagine if that falling out never happened though and imagine if Modern Warfare 2 actually got the patch that it needed to fix the one-man army noob tubes. I feel like everything would have been so different. I mean, even Modern Warfare 3 here could have been a completely different game if that was the case. I mean, imagining Modern Warfare 2 without any noob tubes or painkiller, I mean, all we really have to do for that nowadays is just go play I IW4X, and it's a million times better. But if the base game was like that, then yeah, it's it's crazy to think about what it could be like, right? And again, though, with this new Modern Warfare 3 that's coming out, I feel like Sledgehammer has a really good opportunity to do what they've done in the past. Not just with the original MW3, but doing things like they did with World War II and Vanguard. Oh, this, this lobby is lagging out, isn't it? No, man, please. Really don't want to lose this lobby. I mean, it's probably the only ground war lobby that's going on right now. What is going on? Bro! It says I'm on a four bar, but I'm being lied to right now. Okay, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not gonna bother. Okay, I'll go find another lobby, whatever. I'll try going back to drop zone. Surely it doesn't throw me into that downturn game, right? I'm going to lose my mind. You know what? It's fine. Whatever. I'll go ahead and play it. I could have swore it just said like 17 potential games and this is the one it throws me into. Oh my goodness. You know what? All right. It's, it's fine. Everything's perfectly fine. 
Your weapon rank has increased. Oh, yo, hold up. I think I just got my gold L11. Oh my god, I actually did. Current year is 2023, and I'm starting the grind all over again to get gold on everything in this game. I mean, one thing for sure that I can absolutely work on is getting Blind Eye Pro again. And thank god that's over with. So like I was gonna say, though, I don't really know if this is a uh, very controversial take or anything like that, but Call of Duty World War II is a very solid COD. I know a lot of people don't really care very much for that game, but I had a lot of fun playing World War II. I still really do believe it's one of the best CODs we've had in recent years, especially after the overhaul and everything. I mean, I was already enjoying the game before that, but of course the division overhaul made the game a million times better. And what was really special about that is that Sledgehammer had taken so much community feedback to make that patch happen. And like it's rage. Love the videos, bro. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. Even so, in the case of Vanguard, we had some changes with that game that, again, were based off of community feedback, like re-adding Ninja as a perk and adding red dots to the minimap, even though they added it in the form of uh, that radar perk. Thing about both Sledgehammer and Treyarch is that they seem to be more open to taking into consideration the community feedback. It's not that Infinity Ward doesn't, I just feel that Infinity Ward is pretty locked in with what they want for a multiplayer game, or at least what they want their game to be. They have their overall vision of what they want the game to be, they don't really stray too much from that, and that's fine. If that's how they want to do it, that's fine. They just might get more criticism for that, you know? Again, though, in the case of Sledgehammer, thinking back to the World War II overhaul and the things that they had changed with Vanguard, I feel like they are really open to changing things about the game like that. And that, I feel like, is what we're going to be experiencing again, not only with the old MW3 here, but with the new one. Sledgehammer taking care of this game's original multiplayer, and again, getting rid of the one-man army noob tubes, getting rid of Commando, getting rid of Painkiller. Although Robert Bowling looked us dead in the eye and said, fuck you, Last Stand, we had two different versions of it. No Last Stand. My man Robert Bowling deadass looked us in the eye, said fuck you last stand, and then brought us dead man's hand. He's a certified troll for that one. <laughs> Hold on one second, don't mind me just uh, unlocking Blind Eye Pro real quick. Oh nice, let's go! I keep looking over at my Elgato, man. I mean, it's, it's working, it's tracking, it's recording, but I swear, if something messes up again, I might actually cry. And this game's lagging out too, isn't it? Oh man. Server connection timed out. All right, well, that's tragic. So like I've been saying though, I really do feel like Sledgehammer again has a really good chance to uh, make some necessary improvements to the core foundational multiplayer once again. Again, with things like having Dead Silence as a perk, putting the red dots back on the minimap, just things that overall increase the flow of the game, those core fundamental features in my opinion. I feel like Sledge again does a really good job at taking in that community feedback and I'm kind of excited to see what they do. See, back in the day here with the original MW3, like let's not get it wrong, I love this game. I played it a lot. I still preferred the original MW2 in some ways, even though that game is completely broken. It's just the chaos of that game. The chaos, the community, the, the time of that game on Xbox Live was amazing. I knew that was going to happen. I'd say the only real downgrades to Modern Warfare 3, in my opinion, was the, uh, the overall graphics, like the color scheme. Something about this game doesn't quite pop like the original MW2. Like, this game's got a lot more green, gray, blandish colors to it, while MW2 was just so bright and vibrant. And also, I don't know if this is a controversial take, either, but the, the maps in Modern Warfare 3 here, I don't think we're as good as the original MW2s. Oh my god. Alright, you know what? No. Goodbye. It's gonna put me back into that exact same lobby, and I'm just gonna have to face tank that juggernaut. I, you know what? I knew it. Why do I even bother? Now, I feel like most of what I'm about to say is kind of hypothetical with how uh, Sledgehammer has been handling a lot of the recent Call of Duties, or at least with the majority of their recent games, mostly in World War II and Vanguard. I feel like they've kind of gotten the short end of the stick with Call of Duty development. And really what I mean by that is, I don't think a game like World War II and Vanguard were games that they actually wanted to make. Since World War II came out in 20 2017, I'm imagining at the time they were probably working on Advanced Warfare 2. Like, that's what they probably really wanted to work on and make for their next game. But we all know how that turned out with the jetpack phase of Call of Duty and everyone being really tired and annoyed of all the jetpacks. So, you know, we went back to boots on the ground, went back to World War 2. This one, though, isn't much of a hypothetical because we know that there is a lot of truth to this that Sledgehammer was working on Cold War with Raven. For whatever reason, they couldn't work on a unified vision or anything like that. So they got taken off of that. And then they ended up cooking up Vanguard. What I feel like ended up being the case was that they knew that Vanguard was going to be more of just kind of like a placeholder Call of Duty, mostly for Warzone just to add World War II content into that. I feel like with that, it also would make a lot of sense as to why it kind of felt like the Vanguard multiplayer, and even Zombies for that matter, didn't really get a lot of like fresh content to the game. Because maybe while in the process of developing Vanguard, they knew going into that that they were going to be supporting Infinity Ward and whatever the original vision was for this year or two content of Modern Warfare 22, which has now turned into its own standalone 
and release of Modern Warfare 3. Kind of crazy how it's all worked out. But again, though, I don't know. I just feel like Sledgehammer may have uh, gotten the short end of the stick on some things. Maybe I'm just viewing it in a more of an optimistic kind of way because I really have enjoyed Sledgehammer CODs, especially both Advanced Warfare and World War II. I, I really, really enjoyed those games. And I still don't think that Vanguard was a bad game. It just didn't really have a lot of identity and just didn't really have a lot of things going for it. So just didn't resonate with a lot of us. So... You know, I probably could have just tripled that if I lined that up properly. I feel like I also have brought this up in recent videos, but uh, the current rumor is, again, that that is what Sledgehammer is doing as far as, like, the core fundamentals of Red Dots on the minimap and Dead Silence being brought back as a perk. Like, that is supposed to be a thing. Still, at this point in time, obviously, the game hasn't even been officially revealed. We haven't seen any gameplay, so we don't know what the, the plan is yet, but I really do hope that it comes to fruition. I also really hope that it's not, like, another uh, radar perk in Vanguard. To get Red Dots on the minimap back in that way, I just kind of hope it's a core state Staple, but we'll see. Really not gonna lie to you guys here. The biggest thing that I'm excited for besides the multiplayer is the campaign. I'm such a huge campaign dork. Love the original Modern Warfare series, and I'm excited to see where the new story takes us. Also zombies, like the idea of having, uh, I think it's Outbreak zombies. Maybe they'll eventually add round based as well. Having zombies in that would be really cool too. After I finished recording this video yesterday on Tuesday, we got some more news regarding Modern Warfare 3 and the new Warzone map. According to Metaphor here, slide canceling is back in the current build of the game. The new Warzone map takes a lot of inspiration from Verdansk in the downtown area, and the DLC map Overwatch from Modern Warfare 3 is at the top of the tallest building and gives blackout construction site vibes. Also, apparently Countdown from COD 4 is in the map. So anyways, on that note though, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below what are your thoughts on all these Modern Warfare 3 leaks? What are you guys expecting out of it? I feel like, again, it's getting closer and closer to that time. We're probably gonna have some sort of reveal here very, very soon. Sometime in Season 5, there's supposed to be a uh, Warzone event that's supposed to uh, uh, reveal everything kind of like how they've done in recent years but uh, i don't know we'll see again though thank you all very much for checking out this video leave a like if you guys enjoyed subscribe if you're new it's enraged and i will talk to you guys later take care everybody